In this lecture, we are going to be discussing some transient astronomical phenomena that have been observed and recorded by many nations across this really vast continent. Now, in previous lectures, we discussed how Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples and communities were very well aware of the natural cycles that play both in the sky and on the land. And much of the traditional Indigenous life depends on these cycles and being able to predict the different phenomena and when they're going to take place. Mm. Um, such a cycle as like the Dinawan cycle, which is told by the celestial emu. However, we live in a very complex world and mm. not all events are actually predictable. Yeah, absolutely. So in this lecture, we're going to be looking at some of these unpredictable events. Uh, in particular, we're looking at comets, meteors, meteorites and impact craters and explore how they were understood and interpreted by Aboriginal peoples. So as mentioned, Indigenous peoples are highly aware of cycles taking place around them. So events like something like a large comet, for instance, mm -hmm. that just appears uh, out of nowhere crossing across the sky, it's sometimes very noticeable uh, and often feared by many as comets are so unpredictable in their behaviour. Yeah, so comets are big balls of gas and dust and ice and they orbit our sun usually with very elliptical orbits compared to uh, the more circular orbits of say our planets and Earth. Now this usually send comets flying around our sun and then back out into the outer reaches of the solar system. And to many indigenous peoples, comets are actually usually seen as a bad omen, um, as it's very much believed and understood that what happens in the sky is intricately linked to what's happening here on country. Yeah, so for example, the Ualei Nation of New South Wales, they believe comets to be these evil spirits who often drink all their water. Um, and they drink this water from the clouds, uh, which in turn would create drought for the Ualei people here on the land. Now, further, a comet's tail, um, that represents uh, a really large thirsty family. Um, and again, they can draw water from the rivers, from the lakes, and draw them up into the clouds, where again, these, these comets or these evil spirits would then take the water. Now, this, uh, this linking between the appearance of a comet and the occurrence of a drought uh, reflects some, some observations that have been seen of where these two events have coincided. So, for example, um, back in 1825, there was something called the Great Comet that uh, people were able to witness go across our skies. However, following that comment and that observation, there was a really large drought that occurred in this region, uh, ranging from 1826 all the way to 1829. So similar to comets, uh, meteors are often seen as a bad omen as well, with many mobs such as the Unyi people of the Kimblees, the Yongnu people of Arnhem Land, or the Kunai people of Gippsland, Victoria, believe that a meteor is someone's spirit or that someone has actually passed away. One story that is shared between the Oni people of the Kimberleys and the Wawan people of New South Wales talks about how meteors are shape-shifting monsters that kidnap Aboriginal people by luring them away with honey. A story that is shared by two communities that are over 3,000 kilometres away from each other. Now it makes sense that meteors and comets were interpreted by Aboriginal peoples as being similar things because they actually appear to be very similar with our naked eye. So what then is the difference between these two objects? Sure. So as we spoke about before, comets, they're these really icy um, balls that are flying through our solar system, uh, orbiting the sun. Um, now, they never actually reach Earth, or it's very unfortunate if they do reach Earth. Um, and they just kind of stay in their orbit around the sun, uh, which you know can have a really long cycle. Halley's Comet, for example, has a really long cycle. 
cycle. Now, meteors are a little bit different. Uh, their composition is a little bit different. They can be made up of rock and, and more heavy metals. Uh, and they are essentially space rocks. Again, flying through our solar system, uh, but not necessarily orbiting our sun. Now, often they can uh, be captured by Earth's gravitational pull and they can fall down to Earth. However, they usually don't reach uh, the, the ground uh, because they usually disintegrate by the time that they reach the, the surface. Now, the last thing that I have to find here is meteorites. Now, meteorites are just meteors that actually do make it all the way to Earth's surface. And when they do land on the Earth, they usually come with very large impact craters. Uh, Norla, or the Gossus Bluff, uh, was a crater that was formed approximately 142 million years ago. Uh, when a meteorite fell to the land in the Namajira region of the Central Desert, creating a 22 kilometer wide crater. After millions and millions of years of erosion, what is left is a ring shaped mountain range five kilometers across and 150 meters high. Yeah, wow. So Arente Elder, um, Elder Ani Mavis um, Albanka, she speaks of this impact crater and tells us how special this place is. Now, she explains that in the dream time, there were a group of women, there were eight women who were attending a corroboree, which is uh, essentially a gathering where Aboriginal communities um, group up and they usually have dancing ceremony. Now, the women were dancing on the Milky Way and one of those women had a little baby. Now, the baby was in what we call, um, or what the Arende people call a tuna, but we, call, we also call it a kulamon which is basically um, a cutting from a tree and it can be used to carry a baby or carry food or gather plants or whatever you need um, to use that for. Now the baby was placed in the Kulamon and then that was placed on the Milky Way and then the mothers and the women went off to join the corporate to dance. Now because of this dancing, the baby actually fell off the Milky Way and is said to be plummeting down to the earth where it eventually lands. Now the, the Turner or the Kulamon actually lands on top of that baby and that's what has driven all of those mountain ranges up around it. Now the baby's parents are believed to um, continually be searching for their baby and they are seen as the morning and evening stars. Uh, you can also see the Turner or the Kulamon uh, in the sky as well, and that's represented by the Corona Australis constellation, otherwise known as the Southern Crown. Yeah, and similarly, uh, across in Western Australia, there's another crater that exists, the 300,000 year old Wolf Creek Crater. Uh, and this crater is said to have been formed when the Rainbow Serpent, which is represented by a visibly bright star in the sky, fell from the sky and struck the earth. Yeah, so more recently and within the lifetimes of modern indigenous peoples is the Henbury Crater. Now this is in the Northern Territory and it's comprised of 13 individual craters which were created by this meteorite that was uh, mostly made of nickel and iron. And as it was falling to the earth, it broke up into these 13, or well, probably much more than 13, but these 13 large, um, smaller rocks, uh, which then went on to create these craters. Now, stories of the craters suggest that people were absolutely forbidden from entering these spaces uh, out of fear that um, a fire devil would come. The people were warned not to drink the water, um, fearing that, the, again, the fire devil would come from the sun and they would actually fill um, the Aboriginal people's bodies with iron. Mm, not good. So it's quite clear that many of these Aboriginal stories that relate to comets have this idea that there's a physical process of falling involved. Um, despite the fact that many of these events actually took place thousands or, or millions of years before humans even existed on the earth. Um, and some of them even go on 
to look at chemical deposits mm. from these comets as well, such as iron heavy or, or heavy metal poisoning that can occur in these areas. Um, and once again, highlights the scientific understanding of the First Peoples.